Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey Flowers and I am a student of Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University and I am on a journey to become 100% debt free. I am currently on baby step number two and my debt is right around $160,000. I work for myself part time and my income is about $5,000 a month. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing my budget for February 2020. So if you are interested in that, please keep watching. <music> You guys know that I feel a lot of the budget is more than just dollars and cents and learning how to manage my money is more than just the dollars and cents so I like to do a reflection at the top of the hour so that I can track my progress in other areas so I have a few reflection questions first reflection question is what am I grateful for and the thing that I am the most grateful for in the month of February is my amazing and supportive friends I have some incredible human beings surrounding me like I and I think that I talk about this in a couple of other videos like I think my amazing and supportive friends come up but I think that I'm noticing that the healthier I am the more I'm able to really see and appreciate the people that I have around me and I have some incredibly amazing and supportive friends and I'm so super grateful for them and one of the things that I want to continue to do is I want to actually like call people by their names which is a little bit intense for me um because people get weird when they get in your business but i just want you to guys to know that the number one thing like february was a beautiful incredible month and i was just completely wrapped in so much love by some amazing and supportive friends so i'm super grateful for them the second thing that i'm really grateful for in the month of february is my son's father or my son's dad you know we have known each other for two decades now which is so crazy to think about having known a person who used to be a stranger for two decades it's like it doesn't really make sense it's like the only people that I know for that long are like family like blood family so I mean I have friends that I've known longer but it's just it's like wrapping my mind around the idea that we've known each other for two decades and he knows that I am particularly sensitive <laughs> to the fact that our child is becoming a fully grown adult and he has been incredible in that regard like just just letting me be completely ridiculous and I think that you know you just need that person that you can be ridiculous with and he's letting me be ridiculous about that also like you know he knows that there's a lot of growth and expansion in my company and how intense that is for me just in many different ways and so he's being incredibly supportive in that regard as well so I'm really really grateful for him like I think that you know you have a kid with someone and you have this bond with them for the rest of your life and or I mean you don't necessarily have to but this is what I chose but and we chose to lean into this bond that we have with each other for the rest of our lives and it ebbs and flows throughout my son's like life but it's kind of funny that like now that my son is like about to be an adult like me and his dads are like we've always been friends but we're like friends again <laughs> if that makes sense so I'm just so super grateful for him I'm, I'm grateful that we shared in this experience enough to where he knows how to support me and he knows how to be there for me as our son is transitioning and then I'm grateful to have known him for these two decades and for everything that we share for him to be able to also have some insight and wisdom with respect to what's going on in my business because that's also very intense like sometimes good things can be intense as well and the expansion of my company is a great thing but it's also very intense and so i'm super grateful for him for just being awesome just being really amazing and then the third thing that i'm grateful for in the month of february is i'm really really grateful for time like oh man people do not understand like make friends with time ASAP. The faster you make friends with time, the better your life will be. And something that I realized for me and my temperament is that if there's ever anything that I am rushing to do, rushing to get done, rushing to try, if there's ever anything, and this is just my temperament, where I am rushing, it is not right for me. Because rushing does not fit with any part of my humanness at all. Like I am I don't like and I didn't realize that until just really just this season of like healing and all that other stuff and just getting to the point where I'm like no at a philosophical emotional soul whatever level you want to call it I cannot be rushed and I don't like being rushed and if there's anything that I'm rushing on 
I am not doing what's right for me and knowing that has helped me to be able to make time my friend and to really like lean in and allow time to do what it's designed to do and three of the things that I'm really grateful that time has done is that time has really given me the opportunity to heal mental and emotional instability like there was no easy button on overcoming the depression and anxiety there was no easy button on managing for the PTSD it took time like time did not heal it no EMDR with my therapist healed a lot of that stuff lifestyle changes diet changes healed that stuff but time was like the elixir that gave all of that stuff the room to work and I think that so many times like we're doing the right thing but we just haven't applied time to the equation and so we're not getting our results yet but it's just like you just just gotta let time do its thing. So it's not that time healed it, it's that over time doing EMDR, over time, you know, going through the thoughts and feelings that were causing the depression and anxiety, like over time building up the muscle of mental and emotional health. Like, I am so grateful that I had the time to do it, that I had a full year to just focus on my mental and emotional stability. And then that when I did get back up from how dark I was, that I didn't choose to get back up and hit the ground running, that I went at a pace that prioritized my mental and emotional healing. And then even last year, when I added the physical healing component to it, I'm, I'm just so grateful to realize that like, there's no time that was lost. I am not late. I am not behind. There's there's no fear of missing out. Like I am, time is a beautiful thing. So it helped me to heal my mental and emotional instability. It helped me to heal my finances. Like where I'm at financially this February versus where I was at last February versus the February before last and the February before that is mind blowing. And to see what can happen inside of four years, five years, even if I wanted to go back to 2015, to see what can happen inside of a really brief window. I know that feels like a long time, but it's not. Like most of you guys have already been watching me on this journey for 28 months. Like that went by like that. But to see how adding time to my financial journey actually allowed me to really be able to heal my finances, it's just, I'm so grateful for that. And then the last thing that time has really helped me to be able to heal is it helped me to be able to heal my business. You know, at the top of 2017, I closed two companies. That was a very, you know, I'm always crying. It was a very hard thing to do to close two companies that were once viable, that I loved, that I was able to do the thing that I, it was a very, very hard thing to do. And it's never that I didn't believe that I would be able to get back to it, but I just didn't know that the missing ingredient to getting back to it was just allowing time to do what it does. And so I'm so grateful for the time because I'm very aware that not everybody has this time. I'm very aware that not everybody is able to take advantage of the time that they do have. And so I am just, I spent so much of February just being grateful for time. And even with the people that I've hired in my company, because they're doing the work they're giving me back so much of my time and I'm just like holy smokes time is amazing it is incredible what time can do for you like and just just it's, I'm super grateful for that um what work this month what work this month is having a sinking fund for homemaking so you guys will see in my budget that I spent some money for homemaking but I had already had money set aside I can't remember which month I had set it aside but I just you know I was in my grief so I wasn't shopping um, but having that set aside allowed me to get some knickknacks and who's it's and thingamabobs for my home and it's really feeling very great to sort of add you know structural pieces so that that way I can begin to add those decorative pieces that really just you know give me this a beautiful environment so that worked is just having that money set aside and then what didn't work was me not being generous with my groceries and my transportation and you guys will see that reflected in the budget what do i need to start doing i obviously need to start doing a sinking fund <laughs> i don't want to because you guys know that of the four money problems that you can have from the money mindset manual that my money problem is money management and so I, I hesitate to start trying to work on another money problem while I'm still working on a money a old money problem because I know it's easier to hit a target when you're aiming at one thing right so I really want to get through this money management thing before I start working on my savings problem but I think that I'm just being fearful and I just need to get over it and I just need to I can probably do them both at the same time I'm just really very afraid of it but yeah so I, I sinking funds are important I have really big expenses coming up this year with everything that's going on with my son and it just would be wise to do a sinking fund but that's what I need to start doing what I need to stop doing is 
second guessing myself. There is never a situation. I know we're not supposed to say never. Well, well I won't say never. There is not a situation wherein when I had an idea or I had a thought about what I should be doing that was best for me and how I should do it that was best for me where I was wrong especially as it relates to my business and what I am learning that I need to stop doing is the same way I don't second guess myself in my business I have to stop second guessing myself in my personal life because when I make a decision when a decision is final it's one thing when I'm still thinking something through but when I just have a gut intuitive instinctual like this just is what I'm doing like when I was like oh I'm investing in a personal trainer that was just that decision was just decided like there is something inside of me and how I'm wired that when those types of decisions come to me I cannot afford to second guess them because what it is is that that decision and doing that is deeply connected to something else that I'm going to experience later on in my life that I'm just not aware of is going to have a positive impact. So for example, me choosing to invest in a personal trainer has set me up very well to be able to handle all of the work that I'm doing in this year. But even beyond this year, me physically making myself strong is the hands down number one reason why I was able to, for all intents and purposes, get through that grief and that loss without turning my whole entire life upside down because I was so physically strong that when my emotions were all over the place and when my mental was all over the place, I was able to ground myself back in my body and, re and just remember that I am strong. Like I am, and then also because I'm like working out, I'm also like beautiful at the same time. And anytime you're going through a breakup, I mean, not all the time, but you know, you go through the like, oh, does anybody ever gonna want me? It's like, I've been going to the gym. Like, you know, so it's like, it just, being physically strong and making that decision, not knowing what was coming down the pike, it's like I am so happy that I had the physical habit of taking care of myself at that level because it truly covered me mentally and emotionally. And that just speaks to the idea that I cannot second guess myself. The way that I just decide in my company and I don't second guess that, I just need to be that way in my personal life and I just need to trust that my intuitive hits, when God level ideas come to me, when God level dreaming big things come to me, they are right for me. They may not be right for other people, but they are right for me. And when I do them, the blessing, the peace, the everything that I have on the other side of it is always incredible and mind blowing. So that is the one thing I need to stop doing. And then what are my intentions for March? My biggest, well not biggest, my only intention for March is to double my income. So moving forward for the remaining quarters, I want my income to be at 10K or higher. So 10K net or higher. So my intention for March is to double my income. And now I'm gonna throw you guys over my shoulder so you can take a look at the numbers. Okay, so um, this is an every dollar budget as you guys can see that with the check mark here, which is really good because that means everything that I put on the paper actually translated very well into the electronic document. And this is where the rubber meets the road, guys. So. Uh, my income for February was $5,000. I sent $500 to Tide. This is on spin, yes. $500 to my Tides, $500 to child support. I didn't do anything for my savings. Um, that will be updated soon. Just bear with me. Um, for my housing, I paid $937 in my rent. Electricity, I budgeted $25. I spent $25.96. Gas, I budgeted $25 and I spent $25 even. If you go down my grocery budget, I went over, I planned on $200. I spent $256.10 and that was just, I need to adjust my grocery budget. Um, transportation, I went over here. I don't know what's going on with Uber, but things are way more expensive than what they normally are. My Uber to my therapist's office is double. So like if I don't remember I can't remember, I think it used to be like $7 or something to get to my therapist's office and now it's like $14. And it's been like that for the last couple of weeks so I feel like I don't I don't know what's going on. I, I Well, you know, I changed my therapy day but the time is the same, I don't know. The point of the matter is, is my Uber budget no longer fits and I'm, you're, you'll see an update in that in my next month's budget because really all I do Uber for is to go to therapy because mostly everything else in my neighborhood is walkable so I couldn't believe this that I went over budget, but went over budget there. Um, renter's insurance is 575, health coverage is 150, life insurance is 2625, all of that is paid. 
therapy so this looks like i went over budget this month for therapy but it's just it's because my card wasn't it was on file but it wasn't usable last month so the charges from last month and the charges from this month came out this month and so that's why i recorded them this month so that's why that says 280 50 went to my personal training session 49.99 for my gym membership $20 pocket money i had a personal hygiene budget of 150 dollars and i can't remember if it was in this video or not this video but in, uh, my budget video or video before that i was like yeah i have all this personal hygiene stuff i don't know why <laughs> I have it and I realized it is because I had a personal hygiene budget and I like ordered it and whatever um, but I'm a little bit under budget on my personal hygiene budget likely what I'm gonna do is just stick that in an envelope and let that start a sinking fund for personal hygiene since I sent I tend to get my personal hygiene once a quarter so I think that that'll give me a good budget there $20 for laundry you will see here that I bought clothes. Um, I spent $146.10 on clothes, which is a lot of money to spend on clothes, especially when it's unbudgeted. But for the amount of clothes that I got, I'm pretty excited about it. I had made mention that I have a ton of speaking engagements coming up and I'm gonna say 80% of that is spent on like clothes because I have speaking engagement coming up and I need to be cute. Well, I don't need to be cute, but I wanna be cute at my speaking engagements. But the other 20% was just spent on um, like maintenance clothes, like undergarments or, you know, t-shirts, socks, stuff like that. But $146.10 to spend unexpectedly is not acceptable in my budget. So while I'm happy for how many, the amount of clothes that I got for that amount, because the season and stuff like that is shifting, I am not happy to have spent $146.10 that I did, didn't budget for. Um, and then the other really big category that you guys will see is homemaking. I spent $679.69 in homemaking. I wonder, let me see, is that one? Oops. Yeah, you can kind of see how those lump into different transactions. But the good thing about homemaking is even though I spent this money this month, it did not come out of the budget for this month because I don't know if you guys will remember, sometime in the last quarter before my grief started, I uh, gave myself like about $1,000 for a homemaking budget, a sinking fund. And so I was able to buy those homemaking items this month out of that um, budget. And I'm, I'm very pleased with the things that I got because my um, apartment is slowly but surely becoming a home and, and that just makes me feel really, really good. Um, so $679.69 went to that. I will probably budget next month for some more homemaking things since I only maybe have like, I don't know, $80, $90 left in my sinking fund. But I'm very excited to have had the sinking fund so I understand the value of a sinking fund. I'm just not a natural saver and I'm not ready to learn that skill yet. I know I need to, but I just, I'm not necessarily ready to learn the skill yet. So then we come down and we have my minimum student loan of $939.67 went to my, basically this is my larger one, which is my graduate student loan. And then on my smaller one, which is my undergrad student loan, paid $112.34. So that includes the $715 minimum plus a little bit of the extra payment that you would have seen in my budget. However, the original extra payment that I put in my original budget was more than that, but because I got clothes and because I was over budget, not here, because that was money left over in my checking account, but over budget on transportation, over budget on groceries, and a little bit of electricity, that difference is the difference that I ended up putting towards my student loan. So not completely through, I'm grateful to have made my minimums, but again, want to get to a place where this number is much higher and it's at 50% of my income or more. So one of the things that was pointed out in a comment is that these percentages are based on what is planned, not what is spent. So I wanna make sure that I am toggling back and forth between these numbers to get my actual percentages. So in giving, I plan to, to give $1,000, which would have been 20% of my income. I actually did give $1,000, which is 20%. So my giving is at 20%, which is where I want it to be. My housing, I plan to spend um, 20%, about $987. That is what I spent. I was a little bit over at 96 cents. So you can see that reflected there, but my housing is at 20%. I actually want my housing cost to be at 10% of my income. And that it essentially means I need to double my income, which I'm anticipating in the next quarter. My food was planned at 4%, but you guys know that I spent 250, so it's gonna shake out to be more around 5% of my income. Transportation, 1%. 
even at 75 is still less than one percent so that's fine my insurances are at four percent i'm totally good with that my lifestyle is reflecting at nine percent now this is my lifestyle that is planned which means it did not include my clothes and it did not include my homemaking if we take that amount because i'm not amazing at math i'm just going to do some rounding a thousand is 20 percent so 1300 is probably going to be about 23 percent 23 24 percent is what we're just going to push that and we just don't say that so my lifestyle this month is actually above 20 percent of my income and in part that's a little bit okay because i did use 679 dollars of it from a sinking fund but still that is a very high lifestyle category so i just wanted to point that out then my debt i planned two thousand one hundred and fifty one dollars which would put me at 43 percent planned and then if i come over you can see that i actually spent that amount that i planned which meant which means that this month 43 percent of my income was put towards my debt which again my goal is 50 percent or more of my income to be put towards my debt so i'm not hitting that goal but am i proud that 43 percent of my income goes towards my debt absolutely am i proud that I'm putting 43% of my income on my student loans, absolutely. So again, the aim is to get to at least 50% as a minimum, but I'm still very proud at 43%. I'm not over here like beating myself down or beating myself up because, you know, it was only 43%. I think that that is remarkable to, to do that, especially with my income being $5,000 a month to put 43% of 5,000 towards my student loans is a remarkable thing. And I'm super grateful and honored to be in a financial position to be able to do that. So. As far as grades, I am actually going to give myself a B for this month. And the reason for the B is because I'm so I'm 96 cents over here. I'm $56 over, $22 over in those two categories, and then $146 over. So the reason it's not so I'm over in four categories, but the amount that I'm over and the category that I'm over in matters to me quite a lot and the transportation i'm not over in transportation because i was being frivolous i'm over in transportation because uber changed something that i just wasn't prepared for this month and you'll see that reflected in my next month's budget like i'm just going to reflect the change of uber's charges so while i'm over budget that was not necessarily something that i would have been able to predict or plan or prepare for because uber is a whole company that gets to decide what it will do and none of the trips that i took this month are any different than the trips that i would have taken last month using uber so that isn't dinging me as much yes i'm over budget but this is that's just where the the the, the thing is happening with uber and then uh my electricity is 96 cents so that's over but it's 96 cents and then the same thing with food food is 56 dollars over that is a reflection of piss poor planning which is the reason why obviously i'm not getting an a but it's not such piss poor planning because it's not like again i was going to restaurants and eating it's like it's still groceries it's just i finally accepted the changes in my lifestyle via travel and via fitness and so i'm gonna let that be reflected in my budget and then the over that i have in my lifestyle the two biggest overages that i have one was covered by a sinking fund and then the other one was covered by the money left over in my account from last month because my card wasn't charged last month so even though i'm over budget on food transportation and clothing i'm not over budget in such a way where i completely demolished me putting a significant amount towards my debt or over in a way where i just completely demolished my budget altogether so for that reason i'll give myself a b maybe b minus at the worst but a b the objective the aim moving forward <laughs> is to get all a's and the way to get all a's is to not go over budget to stick to the budget that i actually write down at the top of the month that's how i get an a and put as much of my income towards debt and to constantly increase my income so that is what i'll give myself for february 2020 a b minus which is better than last month which means what I'm getting better every single day, every single month. And that's the way that this works. That's why they call it a journey. So until next month, I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye.